got a problem with it, it can be one of four things. I'll explain the problem. So, clutching, just move the seat a little bit closer. So, clutching, and I can go forwards and backwards in the box, okay. Okay, so forwards and backwards isn't a problem. The problem that I've got is when I come to go side to side, so when I go across the gates, if we go into fifth, again, fifth to six is okay, but if you, if you look when this is in neutral, it should spring back into the middle, but it doesn't because it's very, very stiff. So that's in the neutral position there, into reverse. There we go. Um, and when you take it out of reverse, you should be able to just pull it back and it should flip into the center position again, ready for you to select your next gears. When I pull mine back, it just stops there and it doesn't come over. I have to tap it over to get it into, new, into new, the neutral position and that should be looser than what it is. So, one of four things could cause it. Number one is the ball and socket on the shifter is picking up um, and then you could probably just fix that by pushing, pushing a new uh, um, ball and socket system in with a bit of grease. Um, number two is it's actually the shifter cable. So there's two cables that go from um, your gear stick to the um, gearbox. Uh, one does the backwards and forwards and the other one does the side to side. So there's that that it could be. The third thing that could be is where the gearbox is in the engine bay. There's a gear selector on top of there which then takes that takes this forwards and backwards moment um, movement i should say from your gear stick onto the gearbox and moves the um, gears up and down the primary and secondary gear rail or it could be something more sinister inside the gearbox so what i think it is is i think my cables are gone i think they're just getting stiff um so I had to change, I've got to change the cable, so I thought to myself, I may as well put the cooler work shifter in. So I ordered it early, and I'm going to put the cooler work shifter in, and I'm going to put the uh, new cables in as well. And when I've got into the engine bay, and I'm looking at the um, selector, I should probably have a good look at it, and see what it's like without the cables attached. If it moves freely, then I should probably just put some um, white lithium grease on it, and um, leave it be. If not, then I'm going to have to pull it out and see what I can find um, but I, I think it's I think it's just cables it started happening this started happening when I took my car off the road to do the front subframe I put the front subframe back in I got the car back on the road and as soon as I drove the car off the drive I knew my gears were starting to stiffen up and they're just getting progressively worse um, I can go from second if I'm doing a pull, so if I'm going from first to second, and the second to third, I'm lucky if I get third. <laughs> sometimes I get fifth, sometimes I get first, and I don't want to start doing that. So, cooler works is going in. What do I need to do to get the cooler works in? Centre console's got to come out, and brake's got to come off. All this has got to come out, gear knob's got to come off. Um, undo the cabling for the 12-volt um, supply and the sport button and the dynamic st stability control all that comes out then and you're just left with the um with the shifter here you then go underneath the car you have to drop your exhaust because your exhaust runs through the transmission tunnel here's not the transmission tunnel but the exhaust tunnel you have to drop the heat shield in um off the uh off the car as well um and then you can see the gearbox selector so the box underneath the car with the selector in so you can then withdraw that take the cables out and go into the in engine bay remove the intake i think i'm going to remove the hoses as well there because i want to have a good look at, at this so i've got to drain the coolant as well um and then you can see where the gear um the gear cables terminate you can pop them off and you can then have a have a look at how stiff they are and how stiff the selector is and then we'll go from there on, on what i find so that's the old shifter. Remember what I said at the start of the video saying it could be one of four things, which is one is the ball and two is the cable. Well, 
it looks like it's neither of those that is nice and smooth and the cables work see that's the forward and back that's the side to side so it must be must be out on the car okay so i think i've established that the shifter isn't a problem because the uh, the shifter was nice and smooth and the gear cables weren't a problem because they were nice and smooth and um, the only thing i can think of now is the um, mechanism which is down there obviously and i think that ball there is the forwards and backwards and that seems to be nice and loose after i've given it a dosing of pb blaster um, and i think this one here is the reverse gear but that one is not as loose and i don't know what position it's supposed to be in to move it because it's quite stiff um so i think this might be the source of my problems i'm not going to stop putting the cooler works in because i've got to do some research on this and whether i'll pop it off and i can see the fixings there there's four of them but i don't know how it comes how it comes off so i've got to be a little bit careful with what i decide to do because i don't want to put me in a position where i've got to open hole in my gearbox and i've messed it around so what i'm going to do i think because i don't know how that works oh, i know how it works just don't know how it's supposed to work is i am going to put the cables on i'm going to go and cycle through the gears now put some lube on it and um, i've lubed up i don't know if you can see this piece here which seems like that's the pivot point turn that around at the back that there can you see it? Yes, you can there. So that's just that piece there. I've lubed that up. Um, yeah, that one there in front of you. Where the light's pointing. I've lubed that up. I don't know whether that's. I'm going to have to get my glasses and I can't see the phone. I don't know whether there's a um, split pin there. And I can take that out, deburr it, give it, a wire, give it a wire brush or a bit of a sandpaper to make it a little bit freer. Um, I think that's what I'm going to do, but I'm going to do that once I've done a bit of research on the inner workings of this gear selector and how best to take it out. So, um, watch your space. I'm going to do some research on that. Once I've, as I say, once I've got it in, I'm going to cycle it and um, see what I've got. See if it's any good. If it's getting better because of there's lube on it, I might just lube it again and keep on top of the lubing. If it's not getting better, then obviously the uh, it's got to come out. Okay. Right, just before I put the intake in, I've got to show you this. I've liberally um, coated that. Um, system down there the gear linkage not the gear linkage but the uh, oh it's getting late the gear selector that sits on top of the gearbox I've liberally coated that with um, with lithium grease just to see if it can wear in and see if it can um, stop any further problems with that unit I don't think so I think I might have to replace it um, I don't know but I suppose I've got to get on the forums. I've had a look at my Bentley manual. There's no mention of how you get this out. Um, what to watch, watch out for. I've looked in my Haynes manual. No mention of how to get that out. So, um, yeah, I'm going to stop and do some research. I'll probably jump onto the forums. See if anybody, uh, see if anybody's had some experience with dropping these out and fixing them because well, if it's not that then the only thing it can be is something in the gearbox and then i should just drive it until gear cable snap or it gives up the ghost um and then i'll have to drop the engine and gearbox out forge it and spend about 10 grand 
on forging the engine, rebuilding the gearbox, painting the inside of the engine bay, limited slip diff, bigger turbo, might as well go the whole hog while I'm doing it. Okay, so intake's been removed, Just zoom out a bit, intake's been removed and there is the small gear cable I get my fingers out there, there is the small gear, gear cable if I can just get something to point uh, here and if I just make that pointy thing a bit longer the bit that I'm after is what's underneath it so I've got to pop this gear cable off again so that's just a 13mm spanner behind it and get it out of the way but it's down here it's this bit that I'm after there and if I could try and get my mirror in I don't know whether you can you can see that but there is a um, spring clip I thought it was a circlip it looks like a spring clip holding that in that little pin and there's a pin that goes through this you pop the pin out there I don't think the engine mount's going to be in position you take that pin out you clean it up you um, put a nine millimeter drill inside of there and just run it in and out just to make sure that that nylon bush is clear give it a good clean with WD-40 put some um, grease on it and pop it back in apparently that's what I found out on um, off the guys on that forum so that's what I'm gonna have a go at today so I'll uh, I'll get back to you when I've got it out and then I'll let you know how I got on getting it out because it looks like it's gonna be a bit of a mare right guys so um, I'll get back to you in a minute bit of a nightmare job this is um, as you can see pin started to come out you can see if I could just zoom in on that you can see how rusty it is um, but it's well stuck in so it's took me about an hour to get to this position I'm going to continue on keep on dashing it with uh, loads of WD-40 and uh, let's see if we can get this out and get this cleaned up okay um, managed to get it out there it is um, one thing though I had to pop off both of the gear cables because uh, it turns out that the bigger gear cable was in the way and also here the engine mount bolt is in the way as well so I couldn't get it past the engine mount bolt but um, I've got it out now as we can see there is the bush so I should be cleaning the face of this bush up and the face of that bush up I'll be looking for a small nine millimeter bolt uh, sorry drill and we're gonna as they say run that through there just to clear it out um, and that is the offending pin there so I'm gonna get that all cleaned up with some wet and dry and some lube um, and then pop it all back in and make sure it's free before uh, it goes back in and then I've got to look for the split pin that's uh, on this or the a spring clip so um, I should probably be nipping down to a parts store like somewhere like Euro car parts and seeing if they've got any kits in stock for that but I know I'm not going to get it run today I have got to find out where that spring clip went um, and another thing when taking this off if you decide to do this is be careful of this piece that will pop up pop off um, and it's the vertical actuator that fits there so I'm going to give that face a clean as well and give that some grease okay so into the garage wire brush and some um, and some lube and then some wet and dry and then I'll come out and do that okay yeah, harder than what I thought a lot of faffing around with pry bars and you've got all the tools I end up getting out pry bars and tried to hammer it out that didn't work right nightmare so I should be going and uh, giving that a lot of clean up and I've just I just found a spring clip I think I might have done or 
No, I found a bit of broken plastic. That's not good. I'll fish that out with my clippers. A bit of bro broken plastic just here. That must be. That must be off the. Uh, that bush. Yeah, it is. God damn. Okay. All right. I'll get that done. I'll get back to you when I'm uh, ready to put it back in. Right, so um, that's the bracket. That needs clearing up all that rust. Um, that's what's causing the bad shift. I've been down to Mini. I've ordered a new um, spring clip for it. I tried to get a new bush, but they said, no, you can't have a new bush. You've got to buy the whole thing with £220, including the vat. And I said, no, I ain't. I'm not doing that. <clears throat> so I'll just clean this up, well grease it, and then um, get it back in, wait for my clip to come tomorrow, and then I'll continue with the reassembly. Okay. Right, let's see what it looks like when it's finished. So it literally took me three minutes with the wire brush and I'll drill. And it's all nice and clean, ready to go back in. So I'm going to get the grease out, get a 9mm, um, get a 9mm drill bit to run through where it goes, just to make sure that that's all nice and clean. And then I should fit it tomorrow when I get the clips. Okay. All nice and shiny. Oh, by the way, um, just remember, I need to tell you, don't break this. Whatever you do, don't break it because you can't buy it. You have to buy the whole selector shaft or you have to go down to a tack yard and get one from a tack yard. So whatever you do, don't break it. Make sure it's not broken when you put it back on. So I've got the clips today. Here they are. I bought two just in case uh, I lose one again. Uh, so I'm going to go and get that fitted and then test fit it, but um, be careful with this clip when you get it out if you're doing this job. Um, because if they ping out, oh, I couldn't find mine. I spent an hour and a half looking for it and I couldn't find it. And the replacement cost, I bought two, £14, <laughs> four pence. So £7, two pence each. They are amazing. <sighs> BMW main stealer ships, so. eh? Okay, well, I had to go and buy them. Um, Right, so I'm going to get this fitted now and uh, get this uh, car back up and running. Okay, so that's it. It's all back together. All done and dusted. Um, they're getting the uh, the new clip in. There was a bit of a nightmare. Big fat fingers, slippy grease. A uh, bit of a problem. But never mind, it's done. And also making sure that that black clip is seated correctly is important as well because you don't want to have to come back and mess around with that so everything's all greased up and lubed and good to go uh, i'm just going to put a bit of grease over that uh, over that clip now and um, they should be done see if it works okay so it's worked side to side now is as it should be it returns back and uh, when going into reverse absolutely perfect no humping and grunting anymore and it comes back and into center so i have sat here and set up the screws now so i've got first second third fourth fifth sixth and reverse is a dream big shout out i'm gonna say to um mike cauldron and paul low um the guys who steered me towards that uh, that fix um i've got the guys on a facebook group called modified minis not modified minis um, mini mechanics and um you've only just got to drop a question in there you've got to know what you're on about before you uh, ask the question because don't ask them to say how do i fix it you it's more of a what fixes this and then they point you in the right direction you can go and fix it um so mike cauldron paulo brilliant mate thanks lads so that's it um i'm gonna go take this out for a test ride now and then i'm gonna go and cut the center console and decide what i'm gonna do with this abortion here um so i'm gonna cut the center console so it looks nice down here after i've gone for a test ride all right guys see you later